Okay, we're going to do an inferior alveolar nerve block on the left side. The nerves to be anesthetized are the inferior alveolar nerve, the incisive nerve, the mental, and the lingual nerve. The areas to be anesthetized are the mandibular teeth, half arch from the molars to the midline, the body of the mandible, the inferior portion of the ramus, the buccal mucoperiosteum, the mucous membrane anterior to the mandibular first molar, the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, and the floor of the oral cavity, the lingual soft tissue, and the periosteum. The needle gauge in length is a 25 or 27 long. The patient position will be supine or semi-supine. Their mouth open wide for visibility and access. Their head should be turned towards the operator for the right side and slightly away for the left side. The operator position for the right side should be 8 o'clock facing the patient. For the left side should be 10 o'clock facing the same direction as the patient. Your landmarks will be the coronoid notch, the greatest concavity on the anterior border of the ramus, the pterygomandibular raphae, and the occlusal plane of the mandibular posterior teeth. Okay. The syringe position, would, we would place the syringe barrel at the corner of the mouth, usually over the bicuspids. Okay, I'd like to demonstrate an alternate approach to the inferior alveolar that sometimes is necessary due to some differences in anatomy. Uh, the most important part here is to detect uh, digitally uh, the area back in here so that you can insert the needle uh, in the least traumatic way. This necessitates actually entering the target site from the ipsilateral side as opposed to the contralateral side which you would do it when you encounter normal anatomy. So to begin with, we need to start by having our finger in the coronoid notch which is the deepest depression on the anterior border of the ramus. You literally have to have your thumb on the anterior border. Start from the anterior border and move the thumb medially until you encounter the rafe, which is should be on the, the tip of your thumb and oftentimes can be seen in the mouth. From there, you move the finger back about three millimeters because immediately under the thumb, as you've moved the thumb back three millimeters, you will encounter bone and tissue. Between the rafe and your thumb tip is a soft spot, which in normal anatomy is very pronounced. But in cases like this, that it represents a very small window of soft tissue, and that is your target area. On air. With the target area located, now we enter to the target area with the syringe from the ipsilateral side, in, order, in other words, the same side that we are going to inject. The needle is inserted into the soft little area there. You move the syringe straight back until you reach about half of the length of the needle to which you want to end with. At that point, you will swing over to the normal contralateral side and proceed to the length of the final length, which leaves about four millimeters of a long needle showing. At that point, you would do everything exactly as you would with a normal inferior alveolar injection. Because of differences in anatomy, we're going to do an alternative inferior alveolar nerve block by entering on the ipsilateral side. We're going to inject halfway and then swing around contralaterally and then insert the rest of the way to the target area. In this injection, the bevel orientation is not critical. There is no pressure anesthesia. The depth of the insertion is 20 to 25 millimeters, approximately two-thirds to three-fourths of the needle length. There is osseous contact. Contact. Aspiration potential is 15%. Negative aspiration. And the amount of solution is 1.5 millimeters over about 60 seconds. <laughs>